sunshine Search my heart and do you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you Call me Jake I remember my days in uni I encountered one lady who so passionately was teaching me the word and amongst the things she said, she said, God doesn't give you what you want. He gives you what you need. Sounds true, doesn't it? Sounds like a true statement. Very religious statement with no basis from the scriptures. Just like many other statements people make, heaven helps those who help themselves. Cleanliness is next to godliness. Um, what other one? All these statements that people think, what goes around comes around. 150 Cent actually sang it in one of his songs. <laughs> he says, the Bible says what goes around comes around. <sighs> I would like to believe that of all the studies and sciences in the world, the study of God is the most um, misunderstood study. It's a study that people have put the least effort into. And it's a study that people have placed the least importance on. Yet it is the most important field of study, studying who God is, the word of God. How many Christians have actually read one book of the Bible from start to finish? How many Christians even know that there are books in the Bible that have one chapter? <laughs> there are one paged books in the Bible. How many people know that there are books that have five chapters, four chapters? How many people know that? So yeah, it's a challenge. We have a lot of people going out talking about who's true and who's false. We have a lot of people going out talking about what we should and shouldn't do when they actually haven't read the Bible. So what is the basis from which they are giving these opinions? Because they truly are opinions if they aren't coming from the word of God. And your knowledge of one verse from the Bible does not uh, validate your argument. Neither does the knowledge that you got from whoever it is that inspires you. You're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that bell and share. Um, welcome to all new subscribers. I never do this. Welcome to all new subscribers. If you're watching this for the first time, this is Bible Talks. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 15 hours Central African time for now. And uh, Mondays are for political discussions. This coming Monday, we are doing uh, an interesting uh, political segment. Um, Wednesdays are for rebuttals and Fridays are for Bible talks like today. So if you're not following the channel, you're welcome here. Uh, subscribe, hit that bell and share. For some reason, my chair feels a little lower than always, but yeah. All right, let's get into the show. We are discussing the subject of hearing God's voice. Look at that. I'll keep this short, but I hope this will impact you as much as this knowledge impacted me in my earlier walk with God and even till today. Uh, the subject of hearing God has been one of particular interest to me because um, it has greatly defined my experience with God, hearing his voice. Okay, John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So Jesus here is giving a description of what his sheep would be like. Remember he says he is a good shepherd. So Jesus describes himself as a shepherd and he describes those that follow him as sheep. And he gives a good description, a three pointer of who his sheep uh, would be or what his sheep would be like. And the first, the first, 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 first criteria or first characteristic he gave for his sheep is that they hear his voice. So Jesus Christ uh, came to introduce a relationship with God, being the image of God himself, came to introduce, an, uh, to introduce us to a relationship with the Father. 
But he gave us an interesting uh, prescription. He said, to get to the Father, you need to go through me. I'm the door. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, so Jesus gave that description. Fine. Now he's describing those that follow him. And he says, the first characteristic is that they hear his voice. So my sheep hear my voice and I know them. So not only do his sheep hear his voice, he knows them. Knowing comes from a place of intimacy. You fully understand. You see, many people's understanding of Jesus Christ is a story figure. You know, a story figure, someone they've heard of in stories and not necessarily someone they have experienced or someone they know as a person. Because Jesus Christ is actually a person. You know, the way you see your brother and sister every day, your sister, your, your friends, your uncles, aunties, the same way you know, uh, you know, the attributes of your uncle, that my uncle is like this. Jesus Christ is a person just like that. Okay. And he came to establish a relationship. And during the time he was around, I remember a scripture talks about how his disciples were questioned. Uh, people came to him questioning him on why his disciples do not fast. And he said, how would they fast when I'm here with them? So he, in essence, he was saying fasting is necessary when God is far, but when he's near, it's not necessary. Okay. So he gave a, a prescription, a three pointer. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now, how will you follow someone you do not hear? So in order, there are two things here. The middle, the, the middle point is that he knows them. But the first is that they hear him. And the last is that they follow him. So in order to be known by him, you must hear him and you must follow him. Okay. When you hear him, he knows you. And then you follow him. He actually says, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. I want to share with you very quickly how you can get to a place of hearing God's voice. It's a very important subject for you to understand what it means to hear God's voice. Does God speak like men do? How exactly does God's voice sound? How does God speak? Do you hear thunders? <laughs> oh, wow. I've had many questions from people about that. Let me show you this. John 16 verse 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So this scripture here is a key. If you really want to hear God, oh my goodness. I don't know why people miss this. There are so many keys here. If you actually want to hear God's voice, let me tell you, there are so many people out there whose only understanding of God is what they have learned from their congregations, what they have been told, what they've been indoctrinated with. I'm telling you, last time we were teaching about what happens to people when they die and people came up to me with all manner of scriptures that support what they have been taught in their congregations. And you can tell, oh, Jehovah's Witness, ah, SDA, ah, Catholic, okay, ah, this one's Pentecostal. You can actually tell as you read the comments because you can tell from how they are speaking that this person is simply coming from a place of indoctrination. They don't understand what they're talking about. Remember what Jesus said, John chapter four, when he talked to the woman at the well, he said, you worship a God you do not know because she said, our fathers worship in the mountains and you Jews say that you should worship in the temple. And Jesus said, you worship a God you do not know. And this is true today for so many people that they worship a God they do not know. They're good at quoting scriptures and being keyboard warriors on social media with all manner of scripture, but they have no personal experience with God. They can never tell you of a time they audibly heard God instruct them. We read a scripture just before this one. Jesus gave a three pointer, a description of who his sheep are. Number one, they hear my voice. Number two, I know them. Number three, they follow me.
How will you follow someone whose voice you don't hear? Remember, remember what happened in the garden? Ooh, the word remember. <laughs> when Adam and Eve ate of the fruit they were not supposed to, they hid behind the trees in the garden. And the Bible says they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden. Do you know the difference between the voice of God and the word of God? Let me start there. The difference between the voice of God and the word of God is that the voice of God is the inaudible. You can't interpret, but you can hear. So it's like, when you hear me speaking to you, let me give you an example. If I say, Pajalusta, dai dieng, you have no idea what I said, right? Because I spoke a language. I said, please give me money. But you have no idea what I say because that's inaudible to you. That's my voice. But when I say, please give me money, you understand that because that's my word. So you understand my words, but you don't understand my voice. So what happened is when Adam and Eve hid in the garden behind the trees, they heard the voice of God walking in the garden. They didn't hear what he was saying, but they heard his voice. Now, this is true for so many believers that they hear God's voice but they can't interpret his words. Now, the key here is in this scripture. However, when the spirit of truth has come, he will lead you into all truth. He will not speak of his own accord, but what he hears, he will tell you and he will tell you of things to come. So Jesus here, firstly, is telling you that when I leave the earth, this relationship I have started with you will not end. I will still talk to you, except I will not talk to you the way I talk to you now because I'm physically here with you. I will talk to you through someone else because this person, when he comes, he will not speak of his own mind. He has a mind, but he won't speak his mind. Oh, he has a mind. The spirit of God has a mind, but he won't speak it. What he will speak, however, is the mind of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is simply speaking what Jesus says. So does Jesus still speak to you? Yes, he does through the Holy Spirit. And so here he says, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. So these are some of the characteristics of uh, the Holy Spirit speaking. Number one, if you want to know that it is God speaking to you, you will know because he will primarily speak to you of Jesus. Everything he tells you will somehow point you back to Jesus. Everything he tells you will somehow point you back to Jesus. Either the character of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, or the will of Jesus. You understand? And another characteristic is that he will tell you of things to come. So if you hear him speak, and he tells you something that will happen and it happens. Know that the Lord has spoken because that's one of the things that he's here to do, to tell us of things to come. Now, how exactly does he achieve this? Let me show you. Proverbs 27 verse, Proverbs 20 verse 27. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depths of his heart. Wow. Now, I'll tell you again, Bible Talks is a series. We did spirit, soul, and body. So I don't have to explain that to you again. You are a spirit, you live in a body, and you have a soul. Your spirit is the real you. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now, the spirit of man is the lamp. Some other versions say the candle of the Lord. What that means, what do you use a lamp for or a candle? When you're walking in the darkness, and you have a candle or a lamp, it guides you, right? Because it lights up your way. Uh, in the same way, <laughs> if you're Zambian, you're very familiar with the darkness because of uh, our history with Lord Shedding. Our Zambian and Zimbabwean uh, brethren would testify of this. So when it's dark, you light up candles or lamps in order to let you see. You won't see everything but you see in part. Remember the Bible in the book of Corinthians says, we see in part, therefore we prophesy in part because our spirit is like a candle. It doesn't light up everything, but the, the Lord uses your spirit 
He uses your spirit to direct you. He uses your spirit to speak to you. What I mean is your spirit man has become a tool in God's hands when you become born again. And it is through your spirit that God will speak to you. You may be looking for a strange voice to come from somewhere. No, it comes from inside. It's your spirit. Your spirit is the candle of the Lord. That's the secret. So once you understand the distinction between the spirit, the soul, and the body, then, you know, I was uh, giving an, ex an example a couple of days ago. I was having a chat with my father. And I was telling him about an experience I had learning about spirit, soul, and body. And God took me through practicals. <laughs> And in the middle of the night, I was asleep and I suddenly felt a strange presence in my bed. It was a snake. And this snake began to coil around me. Okay, I was having a vision, if you guys know what a vision is. So a vision can really be like it's actually happening. So this snake began to coil around me. This is in the middle of the night, this is my bed. And it put its head in my mouth and, and you know, captured my tongue, so I couldn't say anything. But my spirit man spoke. And when my spirit man spoke, the snake just disappeared. And that day I learned, now wait. Wow. Wow. The spirit is different from the body and the soul. So your spirit is a candle of the Lord. The Lord uses your spirit to direct you. Let me show you another scripture. John 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Okay, so let me seal the deal. <laughs> when Adam gave birth to Cain and Abel, and the line went on, and Noah had to start that chain again, and the line went on, we shared of the same flesh. That's why God did not come back to make man from the dust of the ground again. God only did that once. God only ever made man from the dust of the ground once with Adam. And he only breathed the breath of life once with Adam. When he produced Eve from Adam, she came out with breath. When he produced um, Everyone else, including myself, we all came out with breath because we shared of Adam's spirit and Adam's body. So why is everyone born a sinner into this world? Because we were born with Adam's spirit. So we share in his state, the sinful state. But when we become born again, God replaces our spirit. That old spirit that he breathed into Adam, he removes it and he breathes in a new spirit. When you read John 2, John 20 verse 22, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. At that point, they became born again because he removed the old spirit. He removed the old spirit and put in a new one. So that which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit is spirit, right? So if you are born of flesh, you are in the likeness of your father. When you go to the hospital, you do a DNA, it will come out 99.99999 because you are the same person, you and your father. You are actually the same person. When you do a DNA spiritually, when you're born again, the same applies. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. <laughs> There's a oneness you have with the Holy Spirit. He is your father. Literally, you share of his spirit. And so when he is communicating with you, he uses his own seed to talk. He uses his own seed. The Bible says they that are born of God sin not because God has left his seed in them. That's in the book of first John. I'm paraphrasing. So because we have God's seed in us, he uses that very seed to speak to us. So I'll give you an example. Some of you may be uh, trying to do something, trying to get on a bus maybe. And your heart tells you, don't get on this one, get on that one. And when you disobey, something bad might happen. When you obey, you might only hear of it. So your heart, your heart, master the language of your heart because God speaks to every man. 
If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. I hope you have learned something from this. This is really just an introduction to hearing the voice of God. God uses your spirit to speak to you. So when you want to hear God, don't look for an external voice. Look for a voice inside. But that voice must conform to some of the things I've told you. The voice must point you to Jesus in some way. And the voice will tell you of things to come. Again, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. This was Bible Talks. See you next week. Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 15 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple and Spotify for podcasters. Come rain, come sunshine, search my heart and do you will find.